Hey guys, MinishCap1 here, just making this video because I found a new level 1 proxy method while I was just messing around in customs and practice mode that I think could be very very useful to Singed players as far as the early game is concerned. Um, so what match, what are the matchups that a Singed player generally looks to proxy level 1 in? Well those matchups are going to be hard matchups. Um, that you can't ver lane versus very well, that are matchups like Jace, Quinn, Nar, Teemo, Kale, anything that's ranged and can really just auto attack the shit out of you basically at level 1. Those are matchups that you generally look for the level 1 proxy in order to avoid going against. Now, the second most important thing to consider when you look for level 1 proxy is the enemy jungler. Is the enemy jungler a jungler that's good at ganking me? Well, Currently in the metagame, it's all full of junglers that are really good at ganking Singed. Graves, great at ganking Singed. Kha'Zix, great at ganking Singed. Lee Sin, great at ganking Singed. And just many junglers in general will usually have a level 2 or a level 3 gap closer that are great at ganking Singed. Um, this is also very good versus Evelyn, because you can't see Evelyn coming, so your ward is useless versus her. Um, it's great versus Shaco, because again, Shaco can also come from odd directions. Just generally, most junglers that are viable will have a level 2 or a level 3 form of gap closing that are used to to um, gank. And this is very effective versus Singed if he goes for the third wave. Um, so what am I doing here? After I take this first wave, what I'm doing is I'm walking over here to the Krug camp, and I'm waiting for it to spawn, and as soon as it spawns, I'm going to kill the mini Krug, and then kill the two micro Krugs that spawn after it. Just poisoning it, auto attacking it, kiting it upwards, making sure that it hooks in front of the, the big Krug right there, so, it, so I don't take the extra auto attack. And then I kill the two mini ones, and then I just proxy this as normal. Put my ward over here in the lane so I can scout any potential all-ins that the enemy will try to do, like that right there. Just get prepared for it, and then kite the wave right back in the tower and execute. And with this method, you actually have just enough gold to buy um, boots or cloth armor on the first recall. Now why is this important? Well, if you just proxy normally two waves and then execute, you don't have any gold to buy anything, which incentivizes Singed players to go for the third wave. And then if you go for the third wave, you're very, very vulnerable to getting ganked um, by any of these junglers in the current meta that are amazing at gap closing. But this method, you you leave yourself um, to be a lot less of a juicy gank target, and you also have a safer proxy because of that. And you also get to buy something on your recall, which is very or on your execute, which is very important. Now you can also use this this boots to run back to lane quickly. Only miss one CS, so that's not the biggest deal in the world. Get zoned for a little bit, but then you can use a level two power spike with your level two slash level three power spike with your boots to have a very strong all in because of how fast you are. Imagine being the enemy player and trying to fight versus Singed who has 480 movement speed with his ghost at level three. How do you get away from that? You either have to flash away, at which point you'll probably still die if you've gotten flung, or you just have to not not harass him at all. And if you're a ranged champion versus Singed who you and you can't harass him, then you're not like there's no point in playing the ranged champion versus Singed. So it's a very, very strong all-in, even with teleport. So this is the secondary method, which is pretty much the same as the first method, um, except the only difference being that you take Ignite for the much stronger level, um, level 2 slash level 3 all-in, which is already very strong, but this pretty much just almost completely guarantees that you get the kill. Um, even if they try and flash away just because of how much how much damage and speed that you have to keep up with people on the all-in. So just like before, um, you start as normal, just running all the way up, going, I prefer to go this way because it's a lot easier to get in, um, to get into their into their side of the side of the map, as opposed to just running from the left tri bush. This is a much safer way to go in. Um, again, just only taking the proxy if you're able to do it at level one. If they deny your proxy, the strat doesn't work. Um, the strat is also mostly meant to be a blue side strategy because there's no Krug to kill going into go proxying from red side. If you're playing red side, there's nothing for you to kill on the blue side of the map that will let you do the strategy because the wolf camp is too far away. And generally, the enemy jungler will be at that wolf camp at level 2 anyways. Um, so yeah, going into blue side, this is generally just a, a going into blue side strategy. Here, um, just taking the minions... Uh, the, the, the most important thing, again, about this is that it's it's meant to be really strong, 
because you avoid a lot of the risk that proxying gives you by taking that third wave. And and normally before like b- before I found this method, I always had an issue with taking the third wave because good junglers and high elo will they, they will gank you very quickly. They won't wait for you to take that third wave. You'll be going to get that third wave and they'll show up right behind you and gank you, which is the whole purpose of, of warding the banana bush, right? Warding the warding the bush on top of um or warding the bush that's to the top right of red buff. That's why you ward that bush. Um to stop yourself from getting ganked, but good junglers won't go in that path. They'll go in different paths to go try and gank you. It's not, like, that's the only path that they can ever go. Yeah, just go ahead and take the execute. Put the ward down so you have you have vision if they try to all in you. Keep in mind that this is just um, this is just a custom game with a friend. And so he's, he, he's showing what the most optimal situation would be for you if you're, for not just you, but for us all together as Singe players, what would happen in the most optimal situation if they flash to try and all in you, but you have a word of them so you know, so you just execute instead. Um, but this all in would definitely still work versus a player who still has flash just because of how much speed you have. Just make sure that when you fling them, you fling them away from the river and away from the rock in the river. Otherwise, they can either flash or flash or away into the river or they can flash over the rock and get away. So right here, if you're being zoned on entry like I am, just abuse the bushes and try and um, get vision. It's okay if you fling them like that at level 2, because normally you don't have enough movement speed to stop yourself from getting all in. But with boots, you have more than enough movement speed to keep yourself away. Um, just As soon as you turn to hit level 3, just pop in the ghost, hitting him with the ignite. And even if he had flash there, there's very little chance that he's going to get away from me. So yeah, um, I hope that this video outlined the pros and I guess potential cons. Um, you get you definitely do get less gold than taking three waves, but it's a much safer way to get less gold, and it gives you a stronger all-in because you come back to lane at level two instead of coming back to lane at level three, um, which is which is arguably Singe's strongest point of all inning. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like, comment, and subscribe uh, if you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.